Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. It's week two of April and that means our prompt in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group is recycle, repurpose, reuse and use your scraps. So you could use the contents of your resource folder, flourish journal, whatever you call it. I made this one at the start of the year and I am finding that I'm going to it a lot just to find little bits and pieces that I might want to use in my art or journals. So I went through it and off camera pulled a few things out like old book pages, uh, pieces of scrap paper, paper bags, music papers, old envelopes, old pieces of writing paper, old drop sheets, bits of tissue paper, map, all that good stuff. And the one thing I didn't have, and this is why I went to my resource folder this week, is a few weeks ago, just before I got sick, I'd gone to my resource folder because I wanted to pull out some, what I would call handmade collage pieces. I like to use those, especially when I'm doing paintings. And yeah, I had lots of collage, but I didn't have any of these particular papers that I wanted. So today, I am going to make some handmade collage papers. So I have some larger sheets of paper here. This was a wrapping on something. And all I want to do is to tear some of these papers down smaller because I want to make lots of smaller pieces of collage paper. It could be done as one big masterboard. Uh, you know, that'd be no problem. And then it could be cut up. But I just wanted to make lots of little bits today. I know what I want to use these for, but I want plenty so that I've got them sitting in my resource folder in future. For me, this is one of those projects where it's a kind of rainy day project. You know, you maybe were thinking about doing something else, you can't go out into the garden or whatever, so you can just sit and do this type of thing. It's also good uh, if you want to do something but you're not quite sure what you want to do, just sitting and making marks really can be quite fun and quite freeing. And for those of you that are perfectionists, this is a great way just to let loose. So there won't be much of an end product today, but I will be using what I create today in future videos. So here I am, I've got all my little bits of paper together. I've not cut them all to the same size. Some are bigger than others. Some are quite small. But let's look at what I'm going to use to make marks. What I've got are basically three categories. The first just being my kind of art supply tools. The second here are kind of human made objects. So the end of cardboard tubes, uh, pill packets, tops of things, a uh, wine, uh, wine cork. And then I've got my third category, which is natural items. So I've got stones here. Interested to see what marks I can make. I've got shells. This is a piece of wood that is textured on one side. Here's a piece of some plant or other. It's dead, lying about the garden, a bit of conifer and a stick. So let's see what we'll need by way of supplies. Now, I'm just going to mainly use some craft paints today. These are bottles that a lot of which are getting towards being empty and I really want to use them up. I've got a watercolour pencil there, I might use it. I've got a graphite stick, I might use it. I've got some gelatos and wax pastels. I'm not going to use everything here, but I've just kind of pulled out these things to use. This is the type of thing you do not need a lot at all. Some scraps of paper and something to make marks. Even my little palette there is a recycled tray. So rather than putting it into the recycling bin, I simply use this as a palette. So I want my black paint there that I've put down, just some black craft paint. I want it quite watery. You could use ink even for this. You could use watercolours if you wanted, though when you go to use them in future, they might actually, uh, once they get wet, you know, they might spread a bit, but don't worry about that. So all I am doing here is making marks because all of these are going to be interesting in collage in future. So just using that small palette knife there, 
just to make marks. Here's another palette knife and all I'm going to do is put lines across this page. Now you could do this with a credit card, you could do it with anything, even another piece of plastic. Now you might look at this and say, well, this isn't much, but believe me, this will make some interesting collage for future pieces of art. And this, to me, is where you can really let go of perfectionism. So I am using an old brush there, the hairs on it are quite splayed, so every time I put a mark down it looks slightly different. And of course when I first dip my brush in the paint, more paint's going to come off in the bit of paper than later on. So I am not trying to create something here where every mark looks the same. Now believe it or not, I am a perfectionist and I have worked hard over the years to try and beat it. If I'm tired, believe it or not, I fall back into trying to be perfect with a lot of things, but through my art I have worked really hard to get, really to try and overcome it because it gets in the way of creating art. Here I've got an old paintbrush, it's not an art brush, it's just a household paint brush and just seeing what interesting shapes or mark I can make. This is an old fan brush, uh, the hairs on this are all beat up now so again looking at what I can do, not trying to create anything in particular, just things that when I come to use them they will give interest, they will give depth to paintings. This particular brush, the bristles are so worn on this, they are, they're almost brick hard because they're worn right down. And again, you'll see here, when I first dip into the paint, it's quite thick. And then as I use it again and again, the lines get kind of scratchier. So all I'm going to do for the next few minutes is really just create with these art supplies. So I'll be back in just a minute. So now I'm just going to move on to these kind of what I'm calling human made. I know art brushes etc are human made but I think you can see the difference between the art supplies and this type of thing. Now obviously I could be doing this on a gel plate, I've done this type of thing on a gel plate before but I just wanted to do something without a gel plate today just to show that you don't need a lot of things. You don't need fancy supplies to make collage papers. So I will just work my way through various papers using, you know, a number of these different things again just to see what effects I'll get. And again, not looking to create the same marks all the time. This here is just a top from an asthma inhaler. And again, you can see more paint on it. I get an entirely different mark to when I dab it down when some of the paint's already off. So again, I will just leave you for a few minutes while I do this.
So sometimes I'm doing what might be described as repeat patterns and other times I am just simply making lots of marks and using different pieces to create different effects. So combining two or three things together. So now I'm going to go on to the natural materials. Most of these I just went around my garden this morning and just picked these up. The stones I already had or at least one of them I already had aside. So there's that old bit of conifer there just pulling it through the paint, pulling it across the paper and getting some really interesting marks from that. Here's a stone I have no idea how it's going to look but just want to see what kind of marks it can make and with the stones and the shell I just washed these right off afterwards because I didn't want the acrylic paint sticking to them so this sort of thing I would just wa wash off and you can see that each stamped mark there is quite different it's quite unique and this is why I like kind of making my own collage papers like this because nobody is going to make the exact same and that in a sense is also why the kind of imperfection is good. If you take something that's round uh, and try and make it perfect then you know there's a slight possibility you could end up creating something very much like somebody else but when you just kind of go for the imperfect, where you're not trying to, to make everything the same, then for me, I think it makes it more interesting and it also makes it unique. And here's this piece of sawn wood. I think it was probably a tree branch that came down at some point. It's been cut up. That's just been a little bit, little notch of it. And look at the lovely marks that that's making. So again, I'll be back in a few minutes. And of course you don't need to get messy with paint like I do. I'm just happy when I've got paint all over my hands. So I'm going to change now from the black paint to some white. I'm just putting this on the same palette. You'll see me mixing it with the same brush. I don't care if it changes to grey. Again, I'm not about perfection here. I'm just about mark making, getting some things down that I can use in future. That, by the way, is the water from when I did my moon gazing hair. Uh, it hasn't sat a week because I actually made this video immediately after the other one. In fact, it was perhaps a day after. But I have had water sit around, yeah, for weeks. But yeah, we won't go there. So here I am using a watercolour pencil, just using a couple of other products just to show you. Now, what I'm going to do is I will use that white paint to go over the watercolour pencil and this will actually kind of seal it so although I was saying earlier that if you use watercolours if you don't seal them when you do go to use them as collage then there is a possibility that the paint will reactivate and run. Doing this that's highly unlikely because this has kind of sealed that paint in. It's, it's activated the watercolour but it's more or less sealed it in. Here all I've got is this piece of graphite. Now again this will move a bit so I can do one of two things. I can leave it until I go to collage it or I can use some paint on top of it just now which again will kind of seal it in. And you'll see that all I'm trying to do is to make a kind of variety of marks. It doesn't how, matter how they end up. 
in the end. You could do something very, very neat. You could do something very detailed. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, just do what you think might be of use in future. Here I'm doing, I've just taken a, a fine liner and I'm just doing some writing. Now this is not my normal handwriting. Uh, I did actually write some words here, uh, you know, so I had something in mind, but you know, not necessarily something that if it goes into a painting that I want it to be read. Here I am just going to look at some of the, I can't remember if it's the gelatos I use now, yeah, I'm going to try some of the gelatos. Now, this particular piece of paper I used in a project a few weeks ago, and it also has gel matte medium over it. Uh, it was a glossy medium, so I'm not quite sure how the gelato is going to sit on top of that. I could smudge it with my finger, but again, all I'm going to do is to take the white paint, I'm putting it on my finger, and again, it's kind of sealing that gelato in, so it moves it a bit, but it also seals it in. Not sure that I love the colour, but you know, the same token, that doesn't matter because I will probably find a use for it in something at some point in time. And just taking the end of a paintbrush there and making some marks within the marks. So here I've got a white oil pastel and just making some marks on this piece of map. So I'm watering down my paint even further and I'm just going to take this brush and you can see there that the oil pastel has acted as a resist. So again, the pattern I created doesn't stand for anything, it doesn't mean anything, but it will just provide some interest at some point in the future. Here I'm taking another oil pastel, working it on another piece of paper that just has some acrylic paint on it. Just making some more lines, again a bit of a repetitive pattern, although I will go on to change it a little bit just shortly. Looking here if I can also get the kind of resist effect. It doesn't do it as well this time. Now it could be that that particular white is thicker than the black craft paint that I used, but all I'm doing now is taking a piece of tissue paper and then lifting it. And that in its own right has given me some nice texture. And I think I do come back to that particular piece later on. A white Sharpie pen, you know, white on a dark colour always looks good, just as black on lighter colours always look good. And again, all I'm going to do is some little marks here. I think I changed direction a couple of times. Yep, there I go. Nothing difficult about this, very, very easy. But again, you know, I'm not aiming for perfection. I'm not looking for all those lines to be exactly in line with each other. This is just about creating some interest on this. And, and I particularly like this piece. Here I go just using the black on the little bit of, of white paper that was left at the edge there. So this is really a way you can use all your scraps. You know, as I say, you don't need much more than some scrap papers be it painted papers, be it old book pages, and a couple of pens. One pen even, a pen and a pencil. And doing this type of thing, I can get really quite into it. It can be almost meditative. Obviously I've got this on at speed, so it looks as if I'm working quite fast, but you know, I wasn't working all that fast at all. And just moving around the page, changing direction from time to time, just thinking about different marks or symbols that I can put onto it. And of course you can start to build up your own kind of library of symbols. I know for me that there are some marks, some symbols that will appear in lots of pieces of my work, you know, just symbols or marks that I'm drawn to. 
So here I've got just a black piece. I think this came off a gel plate at some point. And here I am just making some more marks, almost fish scales. Not intending it to be. And then I deliberately change it up a bit. So rather than doing it across the entirety of the page, I'm just going to do it in different places on the page. Again, change direction. And the good thing is, there's no such thing as a fail with these papers. So that one where I thought I might get a bit of a, a wax resist and it didn't happen, you know, I'm still using this. I've got the white Sharpie pen and I'm just going to make some marks on this now. And supposing I never use these papers, it doesn't matter. You know, I've had some fun, some enjoyment just sitting making these. I know I will use most of them because... Uh, you know, I will make batches of these at a time and then I use them and then I make more batches. So I know that most of these I will come back to at some point. Here I've got an alcohol marker. That's a very cheap piece of paper there. It's that wrapping paper. So it's almost kind of absorbing the, the ink and uh, get a different colour than I might if it was a sheet of watercolour paper, for example. But again, just making different marks. The fact that it's got that chisel end on it lets me make a different type of mark. They're just using a part of the chisel end to get some thinner lines. And after I stopped filming, I just kept going until I used up all the paint on my palette. I still had some little pieces of paper left over that I'll use next time, but I basically used up all the paint. So this is also a good way that if you've got paint left over, grab some scraps and just do this. So in a moment, we'll just take a quick look through some of them. So, of course, Nina has a video this week and I'll leave a link to her video below. So. You know, this week I'm just inviting you to make your mark, to make some collage papers that you can add to your resource folder, your collage folder. And as I say, I will certainly be using some of these in future videos. In fact, I'm quite excited to start using some of them. And this will do me over a number of projects. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. So please take care, everybody. Bye for now.